This is the telescope that we are putting into the library statewide. It's a four and a half inch reflector telescope manufactured by Orion. It's got a 450 millimeter focal length and it's an F4. To get it ready for use, you need to loosen this screw here, bring it up and twist it. I try to again align the Easy Finder with the clamshell slot. Tighten it up so it doesn't move. Now it's basically ready to go. Obviously to use it, you need to take off the front cover. You notice there's a Velcro patch. Just keep it from swinging around like a pendulum. Take off the cover. Now, before I start into how it works, let me go over what we do for modifications. These telescopes are not what you'd get when you buy one, if you were to go online and buy one from Orion directly yourself. These, has, these have been heavily modified to make them a little bit more durable and or user friendly. And again, to meet the requirements of our telescope loaner program under, li under the library telescope program. One of the things we redo, we remount the main mirror cell, utilizing some smaller holes which eliminates the possible lateral movement. We change the eyepiece. Originally, when the telescope comes from Orion, it comes equipped with two separate individual eyepieces, a six millimeter and a 17 millimeter. Well, early on in a, pretty, a, a program that began up in New Hampshire, they had reports coming back to the library, the fact that the customer or patron, when changing from one eyepiece to the other, dropped one on the ground not good for the potential possibility of being damaged but more so dirt if it's not cleaned properly you run the risk of introducing dirt into the focuser assembly it might even work its way down onto the secondary mirror so the cure was to replace those two separate individual eyepieces with a variable power zoom eyepiece that's it there's no need to change an eyepiece anymore in using it, recommend, I recommend setting the eyepiece at the lowest magnification factor. And at this point, it's at a, where are we here, 21 millimeter setting. Now what that does is give you a wide field of view so that you can find your object that you're looking for, center it, then once you've got it centered, then you can change the power by turning the barrel of the eyepiece. But it's kind of tough to do it when you're all the way down to seven because it's a very, very high power and you narrow that field of view. Now, to use it, this little gizmo here is called an Easy Finder 2. This is a red projected LED dot, not a laser. There's no potential damage to your eye. To use it, you need to turn it on and you'll know there's an audible click. Turn it all the way clockwise to the right. Then when you look through here, much the same as a peep sight on a rifle, you're going to see the red dot. The way you use the telescope is you position the telescope in any direction you want to, placing the red dot on what it is you want to observe up in the night sky, whether it's an individual crater on the moon, or Saturn or Jupiter or whatever. Once you've located your object and you've confirmed that you can see it in your eyepiece, turn the Easy Finder off. It conserves the battery power. These batteries, and by the way, there are two AA cells in there. Doing that, they'll last 25, 30, 35 hours, no problem at all. Now, originally, I want to point out. This is one of the modifications that we did. Originally, up underneath the front cover was a CR2032 button battery. Darn expensive to begin with, five or six bucks a piece, unless you're buying them at the dollar store and who knows how long they'll last. Black plastic box housing, housing two AA batteries, replacing that button battery that's in there. So basically, that's how it's used, again, making sure in between your objects, turn it off again just to conserve your battery power. When you're ready to go find your second object, turn it back on again. 
locate your object. Once you've got it, turn it off. The batteries will last quite a while. Now, you'll notice that a lot of the knobs, switches, screws have a red dot on them. Excuse me, a green dot. That happened when I was doing the staff training program at the Harvard Mass Library. I'm done. I've already explained how the telescope works, what it is, how to use it, and how to look for things in the night sky. One of the ladies there, she said, John, she says, even as kids were taught to value two colors, red and green. And I knew right where she was going. I said, thank you, Constance, I will do green. I don't want to have to buy red. So anytime you see a green marking on any one of the controlling knobs, switches, dials, it's okay to touch those. But the fact is, if you don't see a green dot on something, leave it alone. <laughs> because you could mess up the collimation or alignment of the mirrors, and that's a bad situation. So that's really about what we do. A couple of decals and stickers. One about never, never looking at the sun. Let alone pointing the telescope at the sun. There's a considerable amount of heat coming from the sun. You may not know it, but hey, you've got the sunburn, so you kind of know what it can do. Pointing this telescope at the sun, you could soften the adhesive enough so that the secondary mirror might even fall off or at least move on its gimbal mount. Not good. Looking through the eyepiece because of the magnification involved, now you're looking at instant irreparable damage that you've done to your, you've burned your retina. So don't do that. We also put a decal or a sticker on here showing what the moon, the various features on the moon. And this is a nice setup because like any reflector telescope, the image that you see when you look through the eyepiece is flipped and reversed. This has already had that done. So you're not trying to figure out, well, what end is north, which end is south, which is east and west. It's already configured that way. So you don't have to go through some sort of spatial recognition to be able to figure it out. And of course, there's a handy dandy magnification chart on there showing what power the eyepiece might be set at. Okay? Now, in the pouch, we have a couple of books. One of them is, and these go out with the telescope, National Audubon's Guide to the Constellation of the Northern Hemisphere. Covers what you might considerably, what you might be looking at for various constellations. And it gets into a little history about how that particular constellation might historically have gotten its name. Most importantly, the instruction manual. You want to go through this. When you borrow the telescope and bring it home, set it up middle of the day on the dining room table or the kitchen table. Get out the instruction manual. Become familiar with the nomenclature. What all the numbers controlling the knobs, switches, and dials. Don't wait till it's dark out and you go out to the yard and set it up on a table and figure, oh no, what did what? Become familiar with it ahead of time. That's the whole idea. And it goes through how to focus the telescope, how to adjust or use the easy finder. And it covers again what your image might look at. Regular naked eye stop sign is going to be like this. So the telescope is like that. Can you see in close enough? <laughs> and then of course uh, operating the easy finder and the warnings again don't look at the sun. That's, a, that's paramount and key importance to remember. And then background information about where to get information about what's up in the night sky. The other thing that's in the front pocket of the pouch is a red and white headlight. Now, if you do bring it out while it's already dark, use the white light just so you know you're setting it up on the table properly. Once you've got it set up out of the tote and on the table, your eyes are beginning to become dark adapted. At that point, use the red light that's in here because that will not diminish your dark adaption. If you were to use the white light, it's bright. If you looked at a chart, all of a sudden those pupils that have become dark adapted over 10 or 15, 20 minute period are gonna go boop, and it's gonna take another 10 or 15 minutes to readapt again. The 
red light does not mess up your jack adaption. Okay, and remember to turn it off, obviously. So that's basically what's in it and what is available to use. Um, try not to touch any optical surfaces with your hands or your fingers. If you were to look at the eyepiece and it looks dusty, don't worry about it. The staff at the library know how to clean it properly. The worst thing you could do is take your finger and try to wipe it off. There are oils in your finger which after a while will erode the coatings on that optical surface. And don't take anything like a paper towel or a tissue soaked in Windex because that will take off the optical coating. So again, leave it alone. The library staff has been instructed on how they need to clean it properly. So that's basically how it's used. To get it again ready for transportation, front cover goes on, again a pan back here, snap into place, put the disc, take one of the notches, put it over the nut. There's a nut, there's a nut. Obviously you gotta cap your right piece as well. Loosen the turn screw, rotate it down, let it drop gently onto that cardboard disc. Then position the easy finder over to close to but not impeding your ability to grab that handhold. Then with hand, firm hand pressure down, tighten it up. Now what that does is eliminate the possibility of swinging on the altitude of the mount. Just stabilizes it. That's it.